Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So the last video on my channel I did was about how I make my wax melts. That video seemed to be really popular, so I thought that I would make another one as I had lots of questions on my Instagram and in the comment sections asking basically for more details. So I am going to make another video. I'm going to put a few clips of me making my wax melts and talk you through in more detail of how I make my wax melts so if you do like this video and you found it helpful in any way please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button it really helps out my channel also if you could head over to my instagram um give that a little follow it really helps out my business so yes let's get into the video and i hope that you find this helpful okay so um, you want to do your own research on what wax you use but these are the methods I use for my wax and this is the wax that I have stuck with and I really really like this wax I have no problems with it but you might not get along with it so obviously do your research it will take try and error so I use um, Kerasoy Peeler Blend 4120 that is the wax that I use it comes in little pellet forms and you can get um, wax in like flake forms but I prefer the little pellets um, it is quite hard to get at the moment it seems to be quite a shortage of that wax which is very annoying because when you're running out of wax you don't want to change wax because you're not used to another wax at the moment I find it cheaper to buy 20 kilos worth of wax at a time and it lasts me a while so it's cheaper the more you buy um, but I wouldn't suggest going ahead straight away and buying 20 kilos of wax that you don't know if you can get along with yet. That is the wax I use. Methods I use to melt my wax is I use one of these pans. What this is, is a double boiler pan. Um, I picked this up off of eBay or Amazon, I think. Um, it was a while ago, so I don't think I'll be able to find the link, but if you just type in um, double boiler pan, or I think it was like a milk pan, they call it, this should come up. Um, so this is like a, um, like a double boiler pan so you take this off you put water in here and it acts as a double boiler so you don't want to put your wax in a pan and put it directly onto the hob onto the heat because it will burn and it will heat up too quickly and it won't melt nicely so you kind of need to treat the wax like you would chocolate if you was wanting to melt chocolate this you fill up with water and this heats you put this on the stove it heats the water up and then it melts the wax inside nice and evenly um, so I find this is really good. It fits quite a lot of wax in it, so that's a good one. I'll heat my wax up in here and then I'll transfer it to a jug or a pan like this. And then mix all my fragrance oils in and then pour it from this because it has a lip here, like a funnel bit there. Whereas this doesn't. Only thing with this, you have to be very, very careful if you're pouring the wax like this into another container. Because you've got water in here, you don't want any of that water going into your melted wax. Your wax melts won't set properly and when you do come to use your finished wax melt product, it may spit um, and you don't want that. So make sure you don't get any water into your melted wax because that is a big problem. So I just literally fill this up to around here with wax. Normally it takes about 500 grams of wax, this does. Um, and I just melt the whole lot. I keep an eye on it. Sometimes you can give it a bit of a stir, you don't really need to, you can kind of just leave it and it just does the job itself. Um, but just keep an eye on it. I don't know exactly how long it takes, I kind of do other bits in between the melting stage. Keep an eye on it. When it's fully melted, it'll go like an amber colour. You then need a thermometer, one like this. Um, this is just like a candy thermometer, you can just type in thermometer on eBay or Amazon and one of, you want one of these. So I'd check the temperature of the wax, I'd turn the heat off, check the temperature of the wax and it will probably be around 80 something degrees when it's fully melted. So you want to take it off of the heat and it's going to want to cool down a little bit. So you want it to be around 70 to 67 before you put any fragrance oils. So what I normally do is straight away, as soon as it's completely melted, I'll get either a jug or a pan like this. You also want scales like this. These are kitchen scales, but they're also very, very sensitive. So they weigh very, very small amounts of liquids very accurately. So 
I typed in jewellery scales um, and these ones come up. So these are the type of scales that you need. I'll put my pan on and then I'll put the scales to zero. I'll measure out exactly the amount of wax that I use. So, wax ratios. Um, the first clip in this video you'll see me making um, some of my really popular dots. They're tiny little chips um, of coloured wax um, and they go in your wax burner and they're really satisfying to like scoop out and put in your wax burner. So this is what I'm making first in this video. So to fill the whole tray, I know that I need 200 grams. Um, you kind of have to figure this out yourself. Um, when you get a new mould, it doesn't say on the mould normally how much, how many grams of wax it takes. Um, you have to kind of figure it out yourself. So for this, for this mould, I know I need 200 grams of wax to completely fill it. I want to do um, two different colours. So I measure out 100 grams of wax and then I will use my thermometer and keep checking the temperature until it gets to around 70 degrees. While this is getting to the right temperature, I will sort out all my other bits that are going into that melted wax. So my fragrance oil that I use. Fizzy Wiz is my favourite brand to use. Um, I do use other brands. Now, there's so many different suppliers. You just need to, again, figure out which scents you like which ones you prefer to work with and pick the suppliers that you want to work with. So I buy from Fizzy Wiz quite a lot. So in this video, I think everything I use is from Fizzy Wiz, like the fragrance oils. What I want to do is I want to get my fragrance oil and measure out that. So it works with wax melts. Maximum load is 10% to wax ratio. So if I'm using 100 grams of wax, I want to use 10 grams of fragrance oil. You never measure your oil or wax in millilitres because different oils have different weights to them. So I will get a separate little pot or a little cup or anything that I use to measure my um, fragrance oil in. In here I use like a little measuring cup. Put, it, put my measuring cup on the scale, set it to zero, pour in 10 grams of fragrance oil. And then when my wax has melted to the correct temperature, this one, see you've got the little C there. So when it hits 67, I then want to put in my fragrance oil and I mix this for two minutes. I try and make sure that I mix it for a whole two minutes because you want to really, really mix that into your wax and make sure that it's all incorporated perfectly. Then mix, 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 mix and then it's ready to pour into the mould. So for this one, I haven't put any colours or anything because I just want them to be plain white, no shimmers, no nothing, just literally plain white. So that is that finish now, that's simple, that's the way that you'll do it if you don't want to add any colour. So I then, with this mould, um, a few people have asked me how I use this mould, that's why I picked this to begin with. So there's a few different ways that you can do it. You can get a little pipette type thing and scoop up the wax with the pipette and then just drop it into the, the small holes. I find that would probably take a long, 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 long time and would be very tedious. So I just pour the wax directly onto the mold and then I use a, this is just a grout spreader I bought from a hardware store and I just spread it across the wax. It's really satisfying to do and it just pushes the wax into all the holes. What I then do is just use my scraper and it sets really quickly because they're really small holes and I just scrape the excess off, put it back into the pan over a very, very light heat So, um, and then that melts it back down very, very slightly. You don't want to heat this up once it's got the fragrance oil in it. You don't want to keep reheating it to a really high level. You just want to melt it until it's melted again and then re-pour it in. If you reheat the wax with the fragrance oil into a really high temperature, the fragrance oil will start evaporating out of the wax and you'll lose some of the scent. So you've got to be very careful if you're reheating wax that already has fragrance oil in. By the way, I'll keep this on a very low temperature. So like number one on my stove, just to keep it warm because I don't want it to start going cold and having to heat up again because it just takes time. Um, so I know that I need a, another 100 grams of wax. So I measure out my 100 grams of wax into my pan, I then check the temperature. It's normally around the right temperature by now because this one has cooled down slightly. I then add my 10 grams of fragrance oil. So I measure out another 10 grams of fragrance oil. And for this one, I want it to be blue. So I use mica powder and the mica powder I use, I will try and find a link to it because this one is amazing. It's so shimmery, it's so beautiful. 
and it's basically just a natural powder that you can sprinkle into your wax, melted wax, and it makes it like this glistening, like shimmery beautifulness. When the wax sets, it does set matte, so it won't be shimmery when it sets, but then when it melts again in your wax burner, it's like this magical pool of shimmery goodness. So I do that, I mix in my, I put in my fragrance oil first, and then I put in my mica powder, mix it all up. A good thing to know is that the colour of the melted wax will always be darker than the colour that it sets. So you may be happy with the colour that it is in the pan, but it will always set lighter. So to be able to test what colour it's going to come out, just dab a little bit and put it on a bit of paper and it will set really quickly and that is the colour that it will set. Then I will just scrape off the excess um, and reheat and then pour back into the mould. Be careful again not to reheat it too much. They set very, very quickly, but I like to leave it around a couple of hours until I pop them out of the mould. Um, these can be a little bit tricky to get out of the mould, but I find it really satisfying just popping them out. I at the blue and I thought, they're a little bit pale, I want them to jazz them up a little bit. So any mica powder that you put on it is going to just automatically stick to it. Um, someone did ask me, how do you get the mica to stick? Do you have to put anything on it or like water or anything? Don't ever put water on it. Um, you don't want water on your wax melts. It just has this sort of, when it's set, it kind of has this residue on top. So it kind of just sticks to the wax melts anyway. So you don't need to use anything special. You literally just pour it on. Um, I poured this over the blue ones because I wanted to make the blue ones really like stand out and be shimmery. And then I just used my hands. Maybe I should have worn gloves because my hands were really, really blue afterwards. But you wash it and it comes straight off. Um, you literally just work it through and it covers the wax melts. You could also do this with snap bars. Just dip a um, makeup brush or a paintbrush, clean one, into the mica powder and then just literally paint it over and it just sticks to your wax melt. As I put the blue powder on, I mix them all together and put them into a tub. I keep my wax melts in like food safe takeaway tubs and then I'll put a label on top so I know what scent is inside. I also put a date on there as well so I know which date that was made. With wax melts you have to let them cure, it depends what wax you use, but with this wax I like to cure them for at least a week, sometimes two weeks is better. Um, what curing means is you leave the wax in a sealed tub, like the finished wax product in a sealed tub and um, the scents get nice and strong and they just like really get into the wax. So I like to leave mine at least a week but two weeks is better. If you first get your wax melts out of their mould and they don't smell that strong, please don't be like put off. If you put them into a container, the scent will start to get stronger as um, you let it sit. Okay, so now we're going into snap bars. Um, each snap bar takes 50 grams of wax. So that means each snap bar needs 5 grams of fragrance oil. So these ones, the first ones I'm making here is um, pina colada scent. This smells so good, so nice. I just wanna just have it on all the time. Um, for this one, I'm making four snack bars. So each one is 50 grams. That means that I need 200 grams of wax. So I pour out my 200 grams of wax. Again, make sure it's the right temperature. Same process as it was with the dots. I then know that I've got 200 grams of wax, so I need 20 grams of fragrance oil. I measure out my fragrance oil, I make it, I need to get it to the correct temperature, so I test the temperature of the wax. If it's at 70, 60, 70 degree, I pour my fragrance oil in, put my mica powders in, mix it all up, it's ready to pour. Um, you want to pour it about 50, 58, 60 degrees. I like the top of them to be glittery and beautiful. So I use Bio Glitter. Um, I'll try and link the seller that I use on eBay. For these ones, I put mica powder into the um, mold as well. And that just gives it like a really, really fine glittery effect. So I'll scoop a bit of the mica powder out and then just tap the spoon. And then it just puts a little bit of mica powder into the mold as well and then get my glitter and then just sprinkle a little bit of the glitter in i don't like to go over the top of the glitter because sometimes it can just look a little bit ugly if you put too much glitter in you just want to put a little bit of sparkle in that's just my opinion um that's how i do it so i do that get all that prep get all my wax spread ready here i'm putting in the white mica powder um and the fragrance oil again this is pina colada scent and it smells insane 
Um, and then I just pour into the mold. I pour it right until it's very level. Um, sometimes you could pour a little bit under and then come back and just fill it up at the ends, but 200 grams always perfectly fills up four snap bars. So that is the pina colada. Um, as you can see, it sets, they set quite quickly and they'll go like a matte white colour. I then leave it about two hours before I demold them. And when you demold them, look how beautiful they are. They're so pretty. So I'm pretty sure that is everything. So I'm just going to go over like the quick checklist. Just make sure you use a wax that you're comfortable with using. Make sure you know how to use it. If you don't use the same wax that I'm using, they'll have different melting points and different fragrance load points. So you just got to make sure with the supplier what temperatures to work with. Making sure that you add your fragrance oils and everything at the right ratio and the correct temperatures. You need to do your research, make sure that your wax supports the amount of fragrance oil you're putting in. If you do want another video um, where I'm talking more about the packaging and the information that you need to put on the packaging, um, before you sell wax melts, you have to have, legally have, certain information on your wax melts packaging before that you can before you can sell them um, it's a legal requirement in the uk i think it's different in other countries but in the uk you have to have certain information so if you want me to do a video about that let me know and i'll get that together for you because it's very important to know this so i hope this has been a little bit more helpful for you again um you can give me a message on my instagram if you are going to message me um please give me a little follow on there because it really helps my business um, and I will more likely see your message if you follow me. If you have found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Um, be sure to subscribe because I will be making more videos because you seem to really enjoy these. Have a lovely day, stay safe and see you soon. Bye.